Hi guys. Okay, this is my first video review. Um, bought myself a new tripod today and I'd promised them that I'd make a review on it because there's very little on YouTube about this. So, today I'm going to be reviewing um, one of these. It's a three-legged thing punk. This is the Viv model. So, um, if we start at the beginning. Three-legged thing are a British tripod company. They name all of their tripods after rock stars, bass guitarists, things like that. The Punks are their smaller mirrorless system. Um, I wouldn't confuse them as being cheap. They're not designed as a cheap tripod. What I'm using for this video is a cheap tripod. It's a hammer video thing that I bought six, seven years ago. Um, and I'm traveling shortly, so I needed to get a lighter tripod. So, let me show you what we're looking at. So this is the case it comes in. It's a very nice canvas bag, a very good handle on it. If I bring it a little bit closer for you to see. Um, there we go. I mean, it's a decent, decent enough bag. You, in all honesty, I'm probably not going to be putting this in this bag very much. I'll be hanging it on the bottom of my new camera bag. However, that's what it is. And um, they've stopped stitching the way they used to, and they now put this nice little label on here. I actually prefer this. Um, their new new logo there, um, biological attack kind of stuff. Um, the bag itself also comes with a little strap. Um, and I'll show you how this works later, but this can actually be attached to the tripod or to the to the bag. Um, so, let me just show you the bag, then I'll probably tell you a little bit more about the, the tripod. So, just unzips at the top here. Um, nothing too much doing here, just a nice little bit of uh, sponge, just to keep it protected. The actual tripod itself, which I will go through in a second. So the bag itself um, just has a tiny little pocket here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, in here, this is this is new, so to say I haven't taken anything out yet. Um, you get two Allen keys and a little carabiner, and I'll show you why that's important as I go through the review. So as I say, I mean it's thin. It's it's, it's decent enough. It's it's not going to get much use from from what I need, but that's fine. Um, so. The bit that you probably want to look and while you're looking at this video is onto the actual tripod itself. So I must admit the, the first thing I did when I picked this up was go, wow, that's heavy. Um, and I think most other reviews are saying, wow, that's really light. So let me explain why I think that. I weighed this a few moments ago uh, and it comes up at about 1.56, 1.59-ish sort of gram, um, kilo kilograms, yeah, so it's 1.6. Kilograms. And um, when I weighed my video tripod, um, I realised that's only 1.2. Now it's rubbish. It's this really horrible thin aluminium thing that's very plasticky. This has got very good quality parts, and that's why it weighs a bit more. Now, equally, this is the Viv model. The Viv model is made from a magnesium alloy, um, opposed to the RIC. Now, the RIC is basically exactly the same functionality, same size, same weight, everything else, um, or rather, weight bearing load. Um, However, that one weighs less because it's carbon fiber. Now, actually, there's only 120 grams between this and the rig. So you're looking at a, my phone's actually over there, but you're looking at a, a Samsung Galaxy S6 um, difference in the weight. So really, it's not gonna be that much. Um, I actually got in contact with three-legged thing before I bought this, and they were very, very good. I asked them what the differences were, because this is one of the um, Evolution 3 models. Now, what they said was they'd made the base a bit sturdier, uh, a bit wider, so as you can see there, it's, it's much wider, and I don't believe the original bases had this little um, water um, level in there. Now, they've also said that the tubing was thicker. Sorry, so if I just show you one of the legs there. This tubing's actually thicker now, um, which means that the end tubing, so the last, the last leg, is a little bit thicker than it was originally. Now, I've seen some of the YouTube videos, and this was very scarily thin. Now, actually... There's not a huge amount of flex in that anyway. Um, they've also now got this uh, tri plate on the top. Um, the purpose of this was to um, be able to get my English right. <laughs> um, between that and the uh, small hole at the bottom, which is why you have a carabiner, by the way, because there's no hook on this. Now, the idea is you can then clip the, uh, the strap directly onto that and directly onto one of these and you can carry it as is, which is actually quite a nice idea. And um, the, other, the, the other side of these is they also show where you can poke cables through them or you could clip things to them that you, you might need at the top of your tripod. So that's, that's quite a nice, uh, 
nice little thing. Um, they still use this uh, this um, Peak Design compatible um, so capture plate. So I think they call it an Arca. So it's not quick release per se. Um, but again, I can show you that um, later on. So yeah, so as I say, so I, I got onto them and I said, you know, about what, what are the differences, and they came back and they said, look, you know, the, the other side of this is you need to really be getting the tripod that's right for you. Um, this tripod is not going to be right for you if you're going to be putting a Canon 5D on it. It just isn't. I mean, it, it can rate up to, I think it was £44, whatever that is in, in new money. Um, but honestly, you probably wouldn't want to put that much weight on here. So I have a Sony a6000. It's a very lightweight, brilliant camera. I'm about to get a 70 to 200 lens, and that's about the biggest lens that's going to be on here. So it's going to be carrying 1.1 kilograms. So honestly, it's not going to be a problem for me. Um, I think if you're looking with a bigger camera, you'd be better off with something like the Brian or the Roger, um, which are much thicker legs much larger. Um, this is a 32 or 35, I'm going to have to measure it I think now. Um, the Brian is 40 centimeters, which the bag I'm getting is 30 centimeters across the bottom. I really wanted it to only have a few centimeters each side rather than five centimeters. Um, but that model wins awards, it goes all the way up to two meters, it's a fantastic thing. Um, the important thing about this and why this beats for me the uh, Mi Photo day trip is the fact that it carries all of the functionality that the Brian has, um, opposed to you know, reaching two meters. Um, so I can still um, remove the head and attach it directly onto the base, and I'll show you that. It's a little bit tricky, um, I must admit, but it can be done. That means you can get really low to the floor. You can still invert the head, um, which is something that you can't do on the Mi Photo day trip. You can do on the road trip, but the road trip is then 40 centimeters long. And as I say, this is supposed to be a very compact little tripod. That'll fit in your backpack quite happily. Um, yeah, now you, this uh, <clears throat> still has the, if I show you here, has this little clip. Um, so all you do is you lift up and push down. It's not spring loaded really doesn't need to be. Um, but this can lock off at a 23 degree. I think they said a 55 and an 80 or something. Now, this last bit is the one that nobody else does. Um, now, don't get me wrong. More often than not, people are going to be using the tripod like that. Um, so if we stretch down these legs, show you what we're talking about. You know, they're going to be using it in that sort of configuration. Um, but isn't it nice to think that you've paid what um, the rick is about 200 pounds it's about 150 there's some offers at the moment that you can get this for about 130 um, which is how i got it but you know you can get all the way down to to that sort of flatness now that you know that's that's something that you can't do with the other models um so ultimately that's not not going to work for me so i'm happy with this and um, the top slides up now even um even the three-legged thing have said to me, look, we would recommend that if you're taking a very long exposure and you've got a heavy-ish camera on the top of here, don't extend the top. Um, you know, have that down. You can also plummet it right down if you want. You can take this entire pole out and attach it onto the top of the head. Also, don't extend the legs to their fullest. Now, I actually prefer the fact that they're being honest about this and, and setting expectation levels better than me photo that would just say, hey, take our tripod, go and do what you want with it. That's not to say you couldn't do a long exposure with this tripod at full length. It's reasonably stable, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I'm always saying, sorry, we jumped there because I lost my train of thought. Um, all we're saying is, you know, be aware of your equipment and what you're doing with it. Um, you know, people... People want a light, small, thin um, tripod to go travelling with, and that makes sense. But you know, just be aware that it's not going to be a studio tripod. That's not to say, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, this couldn't be used in a studio. Um, far from it. I think every YouTube video that I do now will now be done on this tripod, and I will be casting the uh, the poor hammer video tripod into the bin um, because this is just going to be a much much nicer level. I like this tripod. I like the company, I like uh, Danny um, Lenihan, <laughs> who runs the company. If you have time, go online, watch his videos, he's very funny, he used to be a stand-up comedian, um, he now runs a uh, three-legged thing, and he's right. You know, why is it all tripods are black? Why is it all tripods are these horrible rubbish things? You know, why can't they be fun? Why can't they be multifunctional? You know, this, this is a fantastic bit of kit. Um, a quick word on the colours, I, I really like the colours on this. 
Um, you know, you've still got black. They do say they don't use black, but there we go. That's black. That's fine. They're never going to change that. This, as I say, is the magnesium alloy model, uh, not the carbon fiber. Now, the carbon fiber looks very similar. They don't put the stripes on because they say that they get stuck on um, anyway in post-production as it were and there's just no benefit to doing it and um, what they do say is that they or they claim who knows uh, that they ran through 10,000 pictures and um, to see which colors came up most often in nature and the colors they came up with was brown and blue for two-thirds of the time and a third of the time that makes sense the world is basically a lot of land and a little bit of water and um, <coughs> Or a lot of water, a little bit of land. The um, the thing I like about it is actually it looks very British. Um, this isn't too dissimilar to the colours they use in the London um, buses nowadays. So actually I quite like that. The blue's very cool. It's quite a vibrant, nice blue. Um, there's a really good video. If you watch one of the old Brian videos, I think it is, it goes on about the colours. There's actually a shot they have where a bird lands on top of this tripod. Now, they're not scared of blue. They're really not. It just makes no sense for people to say they are. Um, I honestly you could probably have a day glow yellow they probably wouldn't care as long as it smells right and, and it isn't moving um but yeah so that's that's my initial thoughts um I've, I've been rattling on for quite a while so i think the best thing that we do is um is show you how high it goes um so if we fold out the legs now i'm not sure about timing this i did this before and it takes quite a long time to do actually um these are what is known as paralock um so what you have to do is Click once and then click again. And the theory there is if someone knocks it, it's not going anywhere. Click again and it goes. Now the only downfall of that means it takes a bit more of a twist to get them out. Um, so if, and then obviously to twist them back on again. Now another thing I noticed on this tripod, and it was something that I was wondering about um, when I was researching it. And, and I wanted to show this off. You see how long the bottom leg is? And then how as each leg section goes, it gets smaller and smaller. And I'm keeping my fingers the same length there. Um, can you see that? Yeah, so I, I thought that might be the case. Um, obviously, they can only pitch between there and there and then the next one. And it's going to have that kind of um, domino effect. <coughs> now, it does mean the bottom is a little bit um, skinny. But say so once the legs are locked in, it's reasonably stable. Okay, if we just do the last one, and as, as I say, this is, um, whoops, I'll show you that bit later. Um, this goes back to um, the cheap tripods that have the um, just the catches. Now, these are all the rave at the moment, these twist ones. Actually, was that faster than doing a, uh, a normal catch? Who knows? Now, I'm not sure if you'll see this. I'm six foot two. Now, this is one thing that really annoyed me from the other reviews I see. Nobody ever tells you how tall the, the reviewer is based on the size of the tripod. So if we drop this down here now, there we go. Six foot two, that's how big this is going to be with my camera in it, okay? Now if I want to extend it, and I will be extending this, honestly, I'm not that fussed. I'm not gonna be doing 20 minute um, exposures. So stretch it out to the most. I think they say this comes to about 146, 148 centimeters once the head's put on there. You're looking up to about, about my shoulder sort of height, actually, height for taking a picture not too bad nowadays your mirrorless cameras have a little screen in them anyway you're not going to be bending down it really is a neat point it's it's one of those things would you rather have a tripod or not have a tripod uh, um wibbliness let's say got a little bit of a wibble to it. it it will do but then again i've not really planted it i've got no weight on it you can push down and it's apart from that little bit that's my fault do apologize i forgot to uh to do up the catches and um, there we go but if you push down it's not Honestly, it's really not that bad for a travel tripod for something you're going to be carrying around with you. I think that's fine. Um, one of the other cool things about this, let me lower this down. When you see these orange bits, um, this is basically a, uh, a monopod. Now, this is one of the things you couldn't do. So, if I just show you, busy scroll, scrolling the thing off, you can see the Viv branding on there. Um, you can just go ahead and pull this straight off. Now what you can do is just mount the head directly on here. Um, what I prefer to do, <coughs> excuse me, a bit ill at the moment. Um, what I prefer to do, and this is something that none of the other reviewers seem to show you on this tripod, which is slightly annoying. Um, this little catch at the bottom spins off. In theory, 
you can screw it on there so you don't lose it. Fantastic, because all the screw threads are the same, same size. What that also means then is this pops out, like so. And then these two things scroll together. There you go. And you've got yourself a pretty decently high, just need to screw the foot, uh, a, a pretty decent height monopod. Now, considering you've just bought yourself a tripod, why is that not? I'm doing it the wrong way. <laughs> it's fine, it's brand new, I'm getting used to it. But that's a pretty decent um, monopod, to be fair. It's a good height, it's almost the same height as the. Well, in fact, it would be slightly higher because the leg isn't at an angle. Um, but it's a decent sized monopod then. Um, you can still suck all these in, suck this down, and then that's the monopod you're carrying around with you. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, again, for the price, to, to get yourself a, a dedicated little monopod, if I'm out and about, um, it could be quite nice to carry this around with the full, you know, Ball head in it. Now, I can actually unscrew this. Um, if I do it like this. And underneath you've still got a screw. This does actually unscrew and you've got the, I forget what the, uh, the threading is, but it's the same threading that your camera has basically, so that you can attach the camera directly to the top. You can actually unscrew this pano um, head, I believe, um, and fix it. It might actually be the model up from this uh, that you do that. But anyway, hey. Um, and again, you can see they've got some additional screws in here, all threaded for other bits and pieces. Um, they do say on the website what that could be used for. Probably nothing that I've got, to be honest. Um, so while we're here, actually, oh, we've got this head off. Let me show you how you take this off. Um, Okay, so the other thing I wanted to show you, and that's why I've changed the angle, is uh, to show you how small this can then go. Um, so, what we can do, actually we don't need to undo that, uh, we can unscrew, on this bit, the, uh, the little catch that I showed you before. Okay, you can put that in your pocket, I'm going to put it on the table. You can then release this, and you can invert it. Now this isn't groundbreaking. I don't know if they were the first people to do it, but it's, um, it's doable. And that means you could compact some of the legs down. Um, in fact, we need these down for the next, uh, <laughs> the next bit anyway. Um, we could, and this is what I mean about those parallel legs where you've got to double twist them to undo them. Okay, so, you know, I might need another leg down there, but you're pretty close to the ground just being inverted. Um, the other thing you can do with this, however, if I... I'm very careful with this. Um, <clears throat> what I can do is unscrew this, like so. I've just got this, uh, this head left then, and I'll run through the head in a minute briefly. You can unscrew this little critter here. Just lost a ring that I don't want to lose. There we go. This has come out with it. And again, this is what I was saying earlier about the screw having the uh, same height on there. Um, <clears throat> I have to forward through, so I had to forward that bit, I dropped something. And um, what I can then do is unscrew this little bit here, completely comes off. This then screws. Come on, it does do it. There we go. Screws directly on it. This can then screw through the thing. This then screws directly on top. Or as I say, you could turn it upside down and just mount the camera directly, but I want to have a degree of movement once it's on there. Come on. Oh, my hand-eye coordination is not working this week. There we go. Right, so mount the camera on there, um, suck up these legs, 
And this is a bit, apologies for this, this isn't the tripod, this is me. <laughs> this is having a problem with these legs. Because I've never used twist lock legs before, so I'm getting used to how that's supposed to be done. Now, if we pop out all of these, just like that, there. Yeah. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's, that's right down flat on the floor from what was up here, <laughs> right the way down there. And you know, that's, that's something you can't do with other tripods, you really can't. Okay, so I've gone through the tripod with you. I've shown you how it's got five section legs, how we've got a thicker base on it, how we've got the um, water uh, level thing on the base, how we've got the two column um, neck, um, and how we've got the uh, the water on the top. So that's the, the basics, all the, the way the legs work, the fact you can take the head off, you can invert the, the, the pole and everything to get it down for macro photography. It makes it a very, very versatile um, tripod. And let's say that mono, uh, monopole thing is fantastic. Um, you can do that with the Mi Photo Road Trip, but let's say the Road Trip uh, weighs a little bit more and goes to 40 centimeters when it's folded, and I just wanted something a lot more compact than that. So, moving on to the head here. Um, just to show you how it all works, I've got my um, Sony A6000 here. Now it's mounted with the 16 to 70 mil Zeiss lens. Um, that's just my walkabout lens. That's what I use. I just prefer it to the uh, to the kit. Um, so if I show you the plate, now I've shown you the other side of this plate, um, the top with the nice little um, logo on there. But one thing that really annoys people about these, and it happens in all of them. Don't don't think this is a problem just with their three-legged thing. This happens with with me, photo, Siru, um, all of them. I think Gitzo still do it. Um, all they do is this little screw. Um, so unlike the rubbish tripod I'm using now, which has a nice little bit of metal that flips up so you can twist it, this doesn't have that. I'm unsure why. Um, there must be a design reason for it because so many people do it. Um, there is in the bag a, uh, as I say, the tool. So you can use a tool that is actually a little, um, I don't know if that's going to focus, um, a little hex thing. Or you can see the line there. So if I show you with a key, you can just tighten that up. That's then not going anywhere. Now, to mount it to the plate, um, this isn't what you would call quick release. Now, when Danny describes this, he says, look, we looked at the quick release. We don't like it. It weighs more, it's bigger. This is a simpler um, structure. They, they use this exact same plate on, uh, on their Brian's and, and larger tripods. <coughs> and the reason being, is whoops that okay so that doesn't take actually i'd unscrewed that to the max so that's the 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 lowest it can go pop in slide in doesn't help when you've never used it before and you're using it from the side um and just mount it and then it's just not going anywhere at all and um, so moving on to these little buttons here i'll show you this one first um now, what I quite like is that it says um, lock and rock, just on the side here. I think that's quite a, a cool thing. That's just kind of very British humour. Um, <clears throat> but you've got that on both these. So, this little side one here controls how it pans left to right. Now, it does have, um, again, if I try not to knock anything, it does have the little numbers around them. Um, how beneficial that is, I don't know. I don't do photography that way. Um, but it's there. It's supposed to help you with... Um, <coughs> panos um, but again this camera can just build those as you go so that's not really a problem and um, so again you just tighten that off and that's not going anywhere at all um, so this big screw here now they do say do not unscrew this without holding the camera the reason for that is that does have a bit of friction but you undo it too much and oh dear it's just gonna fall it's and that's one thing that actually on the older models See, that's fine with the friction. I can now move it. It can still hold in different places, not a problem. If I lock it off, that isn't going anywhere. Not anywhere at all. Um, that's very cool, but on the older models, um, they did actually have two screws for this. They had a friction screw and a uh, release screw. Now, I'm assuming they got rid of that because it was just um, problematic for people. Now, one thing that you can do is pop it right down to the side there, and you can shoot um, that way. Now. The other thing I didn't show you actually, when I had it in um, monopod mode, and somebody else made this suggestion, I thought, hmm, it's not a bad idea. What you could do, in theory, I think you can probably see what I'm doing here, is um, when you're in um, just monopod, you're not gonna have the three legs, you've got yourself a, uh, a selfie stick. Now, honestly, how often you're gonna use it like that? And let's face it, um, 
<coughs> neither me photo nor um, uh, nor three-legged thing are promoting it that way but that's in theory an option um, but yeah so all in all as I say um, it's a very decent camera uh, very decent tripod the camera itself is very decent um, height wise again I'm 6'2 I'm stood next to it it is genuinely up to my shoulder now I can just crouch down that's not really too much of a problem or let's say if we undo that um, you can just generally spin up these little screens anyway for most new cameras nowadays so you can easily just peek into it and see what's going on when you're taking the picture and um, honestly as a traveling solution I think it's fantastic it's a good weight it's a good size um, it's a good style I think you're gonna come across lots of people that have just got generic um, red or generic blue yellow green whatever tripod they've decided to go for these time uh, around these time um, and and you know, this one actually has a color language on there for and for a reason um, you know I think Danny does a great interview at one point where he says look they came out with colored tripods once <coughs> excuse me um, and they said that you know the next trade show they went to in China everybody had colored tripods and they were every color under the sun and people started to think well hang on why have we got color um, and I think that's where three-legged thing have really owned it to say look we've got color for a reason we're not just gonna make it blue or green or any such thing just because everyone wants to have a bright uh, tripod because you say you may want to go out and shoot uh, wildlife with this thing maybe you want to be a little inconspicuous um, and again it doesn't take too long to fold back up it's just a case of making sure that that head is uh, twisted round the right way so these legs are in between uh, like this and obviously you get this lined up so that the uh, the two things can go either side of the leg um, <clears throat> but yeah so that's it that's my uh, <laughs> my three-legged viv um, if you've got any questions by all means do please paste, paste them at the bottom um, I'm actually traveling to Asia in um, two weeks so I'm going around Hong Kong Taiwan and Japan um, so I'm going to be using this quite a lot I would hope um, hence the size I've got a new timber switch backpack turning up which I'm going to be reviewing as soon as it's here and um, to replace the aging low pro that I've got I will try and put up a review of my um, a6000 what I really want to start doing is filming with the a6000 this is actually my GWP 88 VE which is a fantastic and um, waterproof life proof uh, camcorder and I've actually taken this snorkeling needs no casing just drop straight in great thing that Sony made um, sadly they don't make any more of them real shame if I can review it I will I just don't know if anybody's going to care because it's an obsolete product any, uh, by now but yes by all means do please give me a thumbs up do feel like subscribing if you if you want to obviously this is my first review most of my stuff is my dog my old fiber side team um, very basic stuff but I do intend to start doing some more more reviews as and when I get time um, but anyway thank you for your time and I'll, uh, I'll hope to see you soon